Hi guys, Chef Kevin Belton here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Now you know, barbecue has its own month. Yes, this is National Barbecue Month. Well, you know the weather's starting to get warm. And I decided, hey, why not let's do some barbecue where we're gonna make a barbecue sauce and I'm gonna show you a couple of ways I do my ribs. Now, somebody wrote me a little while ago and asked if I boiled my ribs. Now, my mother used to boil her ribs. My mom used to use a little bit of crab and shrimp oil in the water. She would boil her ribs, they would get tender, then she'd go ahead and finish them off in the oven or on the grill, okay? I like to do ribs low and slow, okay? Low temperature in the oven, and I leave them in for a long time. So we're gonna start with a barbecue sauce today. Now, here, the recipe calls for tomato sauce, okay? Some of the barbecues, if y'all hear that, that's Cookie getting some water, if you can hear that. Because, you know, she's, I, I mentioned low and slow, and she knows I'm doing ribs. So she had to come check it out. Hey, baby girl, how you doing? You doing all right? Say hi. Say hi to everybody. Say hi. They're they ready yet. No, they're not ready exactly yet. But they're going to be ready soon. Say hi. Wave hi. All right? I don't have anything yet, baby. Okay? She's about to head back to the sofa because she's like, oh, the man has no food. What is this? So the recipe calls for tomato sauce. Some of the barbecue recipes call for ketchup, all right? Instead of tomato sauce, I like a little more texture. So what I have going in the pot right now, I started with some crushed tomatoes. And the crushed tomatoes, it's just a texture thing, okay? Now, of course, if you don't like that texture, you want it smooth, go ahead and use a tomato sauce. But if you have like diced tomatoes, you can always run them in the blender and puree this. But for this particular sauce, we have our, our, our crushed tomatoes. We have some apple wine vinegar, okay? Apple cider vinegar. You know, I was, so, I was thinking about red wine vinegar because I've done one with red wine vinegar in it, but this was apple cider vinegar. And just like most sauces, especially barbecue sauce, you're going to find a little bit of vinegar in there. The other thing I like to put in this for that rich, deep tomato flavor, I like tomato paste. Now, the recipe will tell you about a quarter of a cup, all right? But remember, I always tell you to cook to your taste. I love that deep, deep tomato flavor. So I'm going to do pretty much an entire small can, a little two ounce can of tomato paste. And this is something that we're going to get on the fire, and we're just going to let this simmer. Now, this is going to be a sweet barbecue sauce. So on this recipe, I'm using honey, and I'm also using Steen's cane syrup. A lot of recipes call for brown sugar, and that's fine. And that's what's great about this. You can do different options, okay? So we'll get our honey and our Steen's in this. I'm oh, sorry to block your view. Now, if you don't have Steen's syrup, Steen's is made from sugar cane, all right? If you don't have something like Steen's, hey, why not just go ahead and use a maple syrup if you like, all right? Or if you don't want a syrup, just go ahead and use the brown sugar for that sweetness, all right? Now, as far as seasonings go, I have a few things here. I have a little bit of salt. I have some garlic powder. I have smoked paprika. I have onion powder, cracked black pepper, and a little white pepper. You, you guys know I love white pepper. Now we could use a little cayenne pepper if we want, and we, we can leave it out, but I'm using a little white pepper in here. And this is one of those things where, you know, once you get everything in and this cooks for a while, you want to go ahead and taste this because you can always adjust your seasoning, okay? You can always get that seasoning adjusted. Now. To add a depth of flavor, Worcestershire. You know, my Worcestershire is a thick Worcestershire. It has some seasoning in it. That's why I didn't put too much seasoning in. We're gonna do about a quarter cup of the Worcestershire sauce. And remember, Worcestershire adds a great, great, just depth of flavor. And this is something that you really have to be careful with. If you've seen liquid smoke in a grocery store, you know, it's one of those things where sometimes folks think more is better, well, when it comes to liquid smoke, please don't overdo it because if you actually use too much liquid smoke, it'll actually get a little bitter. So we just have a couple of teaspoons of liquid smoke and that's it. So I'm just gonna let this sit here and simmer. This is one of those types of, 
things where the longer it simmers, the floor, the more the flavors blend together. But you could actually only do this for about 10, 15 minutes. But we're just gonna put this on a nice, nice kind of medium heat. Let it sit there. And once this cooks for a while, then we could go ahead and taste it, okay? We can give it a taste after this cooks for a while. But now, let's go on over and talk about the ribs, all right? You know, they say an old dog can't learn a new trick. Well, personally, I'll, I'll show you something. You know, and I'm using baby back ribs, okay? As we look at the pig and come down to pig size, the baby backs are toward this top, the St. Louis are in the middle, and then the rib tips are at the bottom, okay? So you got baby back, St. Louis style, then rib tips coming around the pig. So these are baby backs, all right? Now, this membrane back here holds them together. And when you say you can't teach an old dog, can't learn new tricks, often I would just usually score this with a knife. Score it in the back, because if you don't do something with this, as they cook, it, it, it tightens up. It keeps it very tight. And this is the connective tissue that holds this all together. So we can get rid of it. I just used to score it. But on the ones I did today, I actually removed it. And I'm going to show you how. And it's not that hard, okay? Basically, we need to take a knife, get up under it. See how that knife can slip in there under the bone? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to just raise that up. See, it's coming. And it gets a little slippery. I used to leave it on because of the fact that I, I know this sounds crazy. It has a little texture to it. And I used to like that little bit of chewiness, that little bit of texture to it. Come on, baby. And this may take you a couple tries the first time. But something I know, oh, there it is. It was almost there. It was almost there. Come on. You can get, there you go. Now, take a paper towel. If you grab a paper towel, because this is a little slippery, it's easy to grab with the paper towel. And I guess I could have loosened it a little more. Of course, on the earlier ones, it came right off. But because I'm trying to show you what I'm doing, it wants to be tough and stubborn. Oh, here it comes. At least it starts to come. Come on. You know, it's just doing that because I'm trying to show you. Look at that. Just, you want to be stubborn. Oh, look at it, gang. See what I'm saying? That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking. And we have the little side, little piece down here on this side. Okay, let's grab the paper towel with it. Because it does get a little slippery, that's why I want to use a towel to grab it. Now you can see why I've never done this before. I have a buddy that would do it all the time, and he would always tease me because I wouldn't do it. Because, like I said, I like that little bit of texture that was there. All right, there we go. Now we've got that off. Whew! All right, a lot of work. Now it's time to season this. Now, as far as seasoning goes, all right, you can pretty much use any type of seasoning you want. We could do this with just a little salt and pepper. If you have a favorite all-purpose seasoning, you know, what are you in the mood for, all right? Here, I'm gonna use a little bit of my Creole seasoning, and I'm gonna use a little garlic powder. So let's get a little garlic powder in there. And we'll get it on both sides, okay? So there we go. Now, kind of pat that in there, rub that in. We're gonna turn it over, and now let's do the meaty side. Same thing. Get that little garlic powder on there. And like I said, whatever seasoning that you like. Now, remember, we've got a little white pepper, black pepper. You could do cayenne pepper in the sauce, all right? You want this seasoned really well because some folks like their ribs without the sauce. So if you want your ribs without sauce, 
make sure that this is seasoned. But if you're gonna put sauce on them, make sure that everything is not over seasoned, all right? All right, let me wash my hands right quick and I'll show you how we're gonna get this packaged, all right? All right, let's move you guys down in here. Now, what I have done, I have taken two pieces of foil, all right? This piece here on the top, this is actually non-stick foil. Um, one side is really shiny, the dull side is non-stick. And the reason why I'm using this non-stick foil is because, look, we're gonna take our ribs, we're gonna put the meat side down, all right? Let's move this, rinse off the hands again, just right quick. We're gonna take another two pieces, and this is just the regular foil, this is the non-stick side, place the other two on top, and all we're doing is making a pocket. Just fold it over, all right? Just fold it again, make sure it's sealed really well. So our ribs are gonna be basically in a little pouch. Now, often folks put ribs on the grill, they put them in the oven. You know, this is one of those dishes where my son, Kevin, sometimes when he's on his way to Florida, he's over in Lafayette, he says, Dad, I'm coming through, can you make lunch for me? So I'll put the ribs in overnight, put them in the oven overnight, 225 degrees, and by morning, he takes this and put this in an ice chest where it keeps warm, and by the time he gets there, he's ready for lunch. So only thing I have to do with this now is put this on a tray. I like to put it on a tray, all right? Make sure that your sides are sealed because you don't want this leaking in your oven. And if you have a longer tray, that's fine. But now this just has to go in the oven, and this will go in the oven 225, and hey, I'm gonna let this go for at least four or five hours. Now, after it's done, okay, let's give our sauce a quick stir. Oh, tell you what, Dan, this smells so good. This is what we end up with. All right, our little packet. Now remember, we cooked this with the meat side down. So if I just make a little tear, and just tear this open for you. Now, this is where we can take these if we want. We can brush them with sauce, stick them under the broiler, or stick them in the oven for another, for 10 or 15 minutes for that sauce to, to, to just glaze on you know that sweetness in the sauce will just attach itself and glaze on and make a wonderful thick type sauce but look at the bones see the bones here remember we took off that membrane look how tender this is because the meat has been able to pull away from the bone when you see that little bone there poking through that means it's so tender and i don't know if i can even get these up without them falling apart to show you let's try I mean, let's take a knife. Oh, look. look, we don't even need a knife for this. I'll try to get these up to turn them over for you. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. See, now all we have to do with this is go ahead. We could put them in a little new piece of foil Set them on a piece of foil with the meat up, glaze them with the sauce, and then put them on the grill if we want and close that grill lid. Or we can go ahead and take and just stick them on another pan and stick them back in the oven or under the broiler, all right? And remember, this first section here that I had them sitting on was non-stick foil, okay? It's different. And, and, and... Yeah, Monica's reminding me to tell you guys that it's, it's different from regular foil. That's why I was making sure they knew it was non-stick. So non-stick foil, remember, one side is shining, one side is dull. And I only use one piece of the non-stick foil. 
So look how juicy this is. Look how moist it is. Look, I just press it with the knife and it's coming right apart. Now, some folks may not like ribs this tender. Some folks like ribs to have a little bite to them, okay? You could do the same thing. 225 degrees in the oven. Only leave them in the oven for maybe three hours, okay? Four or five hours, they get super, super tender. After about two and a half to three hours, I'd say more like three, three and a half, they'll still be tender, but they'll still be firm enough to stay on the bone a little bit. So however you like. So here you go. This is nice and slow. You can put these on in the oven when you wake up in the morning, season them the night before, all right? Just have them in the refrigerator, wrap them in the foil, put them in the oven when you wake up. So if they go in at eight o'clock, now, shoot, now I tell you what, gang, by noon, they'll be ready. You have a wonderful lunch. So I hope this helps you get ready for the summer. I hope you, this helps you celebrate National Barbecue Month. And, and I tell you what, gang, this is such a great family. You know, this is so tender. I'm actually going to take a little bit of it off. I'll probably shred it, little, mix a little barbecue sauce in, and make some wonderful sliders, all right? We could put this on. There's so many things we could do with this. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helps. Remember, you can get the recipe on the Facebook page, or you can also get the recipes at www.tv.com, all right? So I hope you have a great day. I hope you go ahead and get yourself some ribs and cook them up. Stay safe for WWL TV. I'm Chef Kevin Belton. Have a great day.